Hello guys, Panzermeister 36 here. Today's video is going to be a post build review of Dragon 6578. This is the Stug 3 Aus VG, May 1943 production with side skirt. So you can see the box art here, very iconic. And for a Dragon kit, it actually is very correct with what they call it, which is quite rare. So this kit is a Dragon Stug 3. It is based off of the original boxing Dragon 6320 except you get a couple of new parts. Basically you get new bow armor, new engine deck and rear interlocking plates. And you also most importantly get side skirts. The point is to represent a vehicle that was pretty much like a Battle of Kursk era Stug 3 um, where those features, especially side skirts, are most common. And if you want to build a Kursk Stug 3, this is the kit to buy. Also this kit is very very common. It's a more recent Dragon release so there's more of them out there. And it's actually a very, very good kit, which is good for a common one. So as I said before, this is a post-build review. So instead of an inbox review, where I just look at how everything looks in the, in the box, uh, in this video I could talk about the same things, you know, detail, accuracy, but I can also talk about how everything fits together, uh, instructional errors, anything like that. You actually get an idea of how the kit is built up. So I'm going to roughly follow the order of the kit instructions, but I might deviate somewhat if there's, you know, I want you to put this part on now instead of later to make everything fit together. Uh, but hopefully if you're building this kit, you can just kind of follow this order in the video, maybe write some notes and then just follow that in the instructions and it should help you out. Now I will be making uh, two types of, of like notes. One note might be, this is something to look out for because it doesn't fit or, you know, it's, it's something you can make a change you can make very easily. And the second type of fit are like, nitpicky historical accuracy changes that I that I do for myself and I'm going to tell you about but if you don't care about that you can just ignore them and then only care about the previous changes which are you know, like how to make stuff fit together properly uh, you can t take this video however you want um, but you know I just want to help you build this kit really and that's my goal here so as this kit is a fairly recent Dragon release when you first open up the box you're greeted by a bit of a depressing sight. Um, older dragon kits have that beautiful dragon card with all the um, all the goodies laid out for you. You got the big photo etched sheets, the metal tow cable wrapped up nicely for you, plastic parts, uh, the, the clear plastic parts, slide molded details, anything metal, all the decals, they're all nicely laid out for you. You don't get that in this kit. You get a, uh, a tiny simplified photo etched sheet and then in the bottom of the box, probably crushed slightly, are the DS tracks, uh, which I just completely disregard. I toss them out because I do not like how they look. Now on this kit itself, um, DS tracks aren't actually that big of an issue because, as you can see, if you put the side skirts on, you can't actually uh, see the sag. So it's not that big of a deal, but I still find that DS tracks are kind of not my style. So I have gone with uh, spare magic tracks from a previous Dragon kit. Um, but you can use any aftermarket you want there. They should all fit. Should be 92 to 93 track links per side. Like I said before, this kit is a uh, Dragon Stug based off of the original boxing, but you get new uh, plates. So you get the new engine deck stuff and the new bow armor. The engine deck and the rear armor plate and the rear uh, ventilators on the engine deck are all new parts and they have beautiful interlock welds which is what's new about them uh, this version the May 1943 version has interlock welds instead of the standard straight welds on earlier vehicles so you get those nice details new in this kit you also get new frontal armor which is the solid 80 millimeter bow plate rather than the previous 50 millimeter uh, plus 30 bolted on style and then you also get uh, the interlocking side hull extensions and then the new upper plate as well and then also some new fender supports which we will talk about later so actually getting to the build the first thing you're going to do is assemble the wheels as per the instructions nothing really of note here except for when you're assembling the road wheels and the return rollers you can correct the word continento with a u to continental with an l obviously this was done for licensing issues and it's very very minor I didn't do this for a while because I honestly never noticed it but now I can't unsee it so I have to do it on every single one of my kits it's a little bit finicky to scrape off the back of that 
very, very small U to make it into an L. When you get to the idler wheels, note that this is a newer Dragon Kit with a simplified photo wet sheet. So instead of having the beautiful uh, rings, instead now you have these, well, you get pieces of a ring to glue on individually per half of both wheels. So you get 12 120 20 degree arcs that you have to kind of put on. It's, it's not that much of a problem. It still fits very well. You just need a little bit of CA glue and you put them on. It's just a little bit more painful because Dragon simplified the photo sheet to cut costs. With the wheels all done, uh, you're going to move on to the lower hull itself. First thing to do here is to cut off these six big tabs that stick off the top. They look like they're supposed to be there because they're molded very well, but they're just part of the injection molding process for the slide molded hull. And if you leave them on, you're going to have trouble fitting the upper hull and the fenders. They won't, they won't fit at all. Also in the lower hull, there are some unused witness marks for on a Panzer III. There's additional fender support braces that go on here. Those parts are not used on this kit, so you can scrape off these witness marks, but you don't really notice them anyways, especially with the side skirts and the tracks and the wheels and everything, and mud maybe, in the way. All right, now you're going to put on the, uh, the some of the armor plating on the front of the hull, and when it comes to the new 80mm bow plate, looks really, really good, but it has the sprue attachment points in basically the worst possible location, right smack in the middle, and just be careful here, clean them up, because if you do any bad job sanding these attachment points, uh, you'll definitely notice it because it's right smack in the middle of the bow plate. However, these new, uh, new armor plates designed for the kit here do fit very, very well, which is rare for Dragon adding parts to older kits to make a new version. Usually they don't fit at all. So after you put the bow plate and everything else up here on, you should also put uh, the transmission cover plate, this whole guy right up here on as well at the same time. Uh, even though they tell you to do it at the very, very end, do it now. And you should, if you're concerned about the historical accuracy of the vehicle, you can do this change. If you're not, ignore what I'm about to say. Uh, the frontal hull, the way they give in the kit, these armor plates here interlock with the edge of the hull side extension here for the toe points. So this plate kind of extends up to about here and that kind of comes out and interlocks. That's a 1944 thing. This is a 1943 vehicle. So what I did was I just kind of had to use some uh, putty and scraping to, you know, fill the gap between them and then make it merge with these plates so that, um, you know, there's no more interlocking. And the, um, if you look down here, basically where this toe point comes up and meets the weld, the, the edge of this plate ends. And then above that, this is now part of each of these armor plates. After working on the front of the hull, the next thing you'll do is work on the rear of the hull. And with the instructions here, you should follow them completely to the, to the letter. Uh, don't do any changes, but be careful because in the following steps, Dragon shows more parts on that shouldn't be there. So it shows you putting on part B29, which is a hemispherical cover for the access points of the engine. That's correct. Do that. Put that part on. It looks good. Just be... just then... In the next step, they show this trailer hitch being attached to it, which might confuse some people because Dragon has a habit of forgetting to, to tell you to put on parts, and then they just put them on, and then you have to kind of figure them out on your own. But that's not what's happening here. It's an it's an error. That part should not be on the the trailer hitch. So just leave part B29 on the on the rear of the hull there. At the same time you're doing this, this small four bolt access port here should be removed uh, because it was only on earlier vehicles, so I just... Again, this is a pretty minor thing that you don't really notice, so you can just leave it if you don't care about it. But I got rid of it by just scraping it and then sanding it flush. Now, in the rear of the hull of my kit, you can see that I've actually um, done some damage kind of to these sheet metal air deflectors. Really, really easy because the kit parts are very thin, so I just grab them with my hands and I can bend them by hand to make them look, you know, dinged up sheet metal. Easy stuff to do. You can also do that with the fenders as well because they are very, very fine and nicely molded. You might also be able to see that I've added some tiny four inch chains kind of to these toe points coming from the end of that pin and going back up. Again, a minor detail I've added to correct historical accuracy, but it's very, very small and you know not really noticeable. 
Next up, the rear hull plate. That's this guy on the back there, which has the hole for the starter crank and such. Uh, it's a new part in the kit with the interlocking armor on the sides. It's a little bit tricky because you have to kind of fill the gaps a little bit to make it actually look convincingly interlocked. The way I fixed this was when I, you know, when you need to put it on, there's a bit of a gap. So I did the technique where you put a lot of, of uh, plastic cement on there and then squeeze the parts together so that it melts the plastic and bubbles up and fills the gap. And then I go in there with my file and I sand it down to after about half an hour once it's dried. And I use that bubbled up stuff as basically filler so I can actually sand it smooth without bothering with putty or anything like that. And that actually worked really, really well in this part. So be aware that you can fix this part very, very easily, which is a little bit of sanding and a little bit of a putty or whatever other way you want to fill it. All right, now we can look at the fenders, which is where most of the work in the kit will be involved. Um, so first thing I want to point out is that Dragon has you use the old fender supports, which are parts G33. You, I mean, you could use them, but you might as well use the brand new parts they gave you, which are parts L5. They're on the new sprue right next to the uh, the new front hull armor we used previously. So if you look at the comparison, you can see that the new part L5, which I glued on the fender here, is kind of like a pressed piece, while the older part G33 is more just like a tubular support. And when I uh, put it on, you can see that the fender has some previously molded bolt detail to correspond with the old part G33, the tube. So to make the new part fit, you have to kind of quickly scrape off that molded on stuff. It takes like two seconds. Doesn't really need to be that pretty. You can just kind of do it quick and dirty because it's underneath the new finish support. But a little bit of scraping, maybe a little bit of filing, and the new part L5 will fit on perfectly. And then now you're using the new parts and you've got an accurate vehicle. Next up, the front and rear fender supports, which are kind of different because they go underneath the fender. I would not put them onto the fender like they show in the instructions because it's a little bit fiddly the way that they go between the lower hull sides and the fenders themselves. So what I would do instead is I would actually uh, glue the fender on now and then put these parts on at the same time so that everything lines up nicely because like I said it's a little bit finicky in how they all go together. But if you do it all at once it should fit. Also I recommend putting on the superstructure at the same time you put on the fenders. You don't have to put the full superstructure on, you can just put the outer shell that they have molded as a slide molded big piece. Just, you know, it, it, have to, it has to kind of interlock, not really interlock, but it has to kind of go together with the fenders. And if you leave it later, you might have a little bit of fit issues, gaps, but if you put it all on now, it'll line up really nicely and there's no problem with that. Uh, when I show you looking at the fire extinguisher, go with the leftmost option. That's accurate for this factory that built this vehicle. It's just the one they show in the kit though, so just go with that. Don't worry about it too much. There's a photo wet sheet here that's a little bit too long. It interferes with the fender supports. This is a common issue on all the Dragon Stoke 3 kits. This part is always too long. So you just trim off a little bit of the PE at the, uh, the flat end which goes up against the back of the superstructure. And then you just glue it on with some CA and it fits perfectly fine. Just be aware that you have to trim it a little bit. All right, now for the only change that you require is some aftermarket accessories in this kit. And again, this is a historical thing, so if you don't care about historical accuracy, don't worry about this. Uh, so Dragon has you put on these things called S-hooks, which is a double mount on one of the fenders. It's a, it's a hook for towing the vehicle, essentially. It goes between the vehicle and the, the cable itself. S-hooks were deleted uh, around this time in Stoke 3 production, and they replaced them with something called a C-hook, which is basically the same thing, but it looks like a C. Dragon gives you those parts. I think they're A63. They're on the A sprue with the wheels unused. Uh, you have the, the hook, I mean, but you don't actually have the clamp for it. I've used a Griffin model photo etch accessory for this because I want my vehicle to be accurate. Uh, there are a few other companies that make this photo etch part, but it comes in big sets and it's kind of expensive. I'm hoping someday some aftermarket company will 3D print these like they've done all the other German clamps because this is a common... Uh, missing detail on many Stoke 3 kits, the C-hook clamp. And lastly with the fenders, I want to point out that I've added some wood grain texture onto the jack block. The, it comes with the, the wood grain on the top here, but the sides here and then like also the front and back don't have it. So I'd use my hobby knife and I just kind of lightly scrape at it in horizontal lines here 
and then on, on the back and the front I actually kind of do it in like a curvy pattern to make it look wooden so that's a pretty easy, easy thing to do and then when you give this thing a wash after you've painted a wood color it'll really look like real wood now for the engine deck you have a new part in the kit like I've said before it's the same as the old one just with interlock welds so you have to put on the hinges still like the previous one a little bit fiddly but just be careful and then put the hatches on right away so that everything lines up it should pop nicely together these new parts just like the front of the hull they all fit really really well which is rare for Dragon adding new parts to their kits like the ventilators on the side fit perfectly and the welds nicely fill the gap and everything like that and then you can put on the photo wedge vents on the top which are easy Dragon does have some photo wedge in this kit as you can see of course I've already talked about the stuff on the sides of the fenders you also got these two vents here another vent underneath the bottom you can't really see it but it's under there and then you also got this ring in the cupola we'll look at later it's all very very basic stuff no bending required it's good PE that comes with it so it gives you nice details where you need it without being over the top or anything like that oh and one more thing uh, when you put the engine deck on you have to cut off these three tabs in the bottom kinda like on the hull sides at the very beginning otherwise the part won't fit together so just hack them off kind of crudely and it'll pop on nice alright let's finish this video up with the superstructure so not too much to comment here it actually goes together very well like I said before I recommend you put it on when you put the fenders on just the shell and you can work on it more later this kit does have a partial interior you can like a floor and a rear wall and a couple of details but you're missing like the machine guns and the stuff stowed on the back which you would definitely see in all the ammo um, you get the radios I guess but it's kind of missing a lot so I don't really bother with it too much but if you want to you can leave the hatches open and show it off or put some figures in there also if you want to leave the machine gun shield here like you can flip it up and then you can brace it with the back of this hatch because in real life it can't stand up on its own it's just a sheet metal thing so that looks you know kind of like this here and the kit gives you an MG34 which you can stick in that little slot there for the loader to shoot guys with there is a little bit of a seam lines and a couple of parts when you look at the superstructure so for example the side skirt support rails have a little bit of a seam line on them or like flash or whatever uh, same thing with the mantlet around the top of where it's slide molded you get some kind of weird lines going and on the superstructure itself you have a little bit of that kind of in the corners here sometimes and it can extend down a little bit but it's not too bad quick scraping deals with it and especially when you put on the side skirt support brackets that kind of covers most of it up anyways right and the smoke grenade launchers here they give you optional empty tubes and full ones I've, I've used the full ones as you can see here dragon correctly tells you that the entire assembly is optional with a little optional symbol because some of these vehicles didn't have them they were getting rid of the smoke launchers at this time because they were getting hit by small arms fire and going off and shrouding the vehicle in smoke so the crew couldn't see uh, so depending on your reference photo you can just leave them off if you do so there's a little witness marks there which you can scrape away which I recommend doing before you put the superstructure on the fenders because it can be a little bit tricky to get the witness marks out once this is all glued together I have used an aftermarket gun barrel here I uh, don't need to do that because the kit has a very nice slide molded one piece barrel with just a tiny faint molding seam which you can scrape off in just a couple seconds and you get a nice muzzle brake in the kit I've gone with an aftermarket barrel because I want a special muzzle brake uh, it's a slightly wider type at the end it's kind of more oval than round based off reference photos I want to do this specific version but the kit muzzle brake is also fine and historically accurate but if you're curious this is the aftermarket barrel set I used RB model 35B49. It's not really early, it's more like a mid. So, because of how the gun mounts in there, there's all these little tiny gaps and it's hard to paint it when you're airbrushing the thing. So, I recommend you leave the gun separate, and to do so, you have to actually leave the, uh, the roof separate so that you can pull the gun out the top. It just pops right up. Glue this part to the roof, not to the superstructure front, like over there, like they say, because then you can't take the gun out so I'll show you a clip here if I just carefully glue it along the top so that the part is part of the roof and not part of the superstructure itself the cupola has a nice little photo etch ring that goes inside there 
this whole thing fits together beautifully and you also have some clear periscopes I haven't put in there yet because I want to leave them separate for painting but that PE ring looks a little bit tricky to get in it's actually no issue because it's very springy so what you can do is you can actually just cut it off the fret put a little bit of CA inside the uh, the ring and then just pop the part in there and since it's like a spring it'll kind of act like a like a leaf spring and, and just kind of curl itself into the right place so it's actually no trouble at all uh, like I said before, the photo watch in this kit is very, very easy to use. Last thing to discuss will be the side skirts. Uh, these are a nickel metal something sheet you get in the kit. So they come on like little frets like PE. You can see a couple parts still on there. Just carefully cut them off. Maybe do a little bit of sanding to clean it up. And then what I'd recommend doing, because there's no locating marks for these um, bottom pegs, uh, you should put this top rail on which is easy to locate based off of how it has to align with the corners of the superstructure uh, put this on then hang the side skirts from it and then based off of where the holes are you can just put those tiny little pegs in the bottom and it's no trouble if you do it that way otherwise it's a little bit fiddly to get those guys lined up properly a couple of other things I should note I have not yet put the tow cable on which is why there's a little gaps there for where the tow hook uh, tool clamps kind of go in the kit. I just want to use some aftermarket that's still in the mail for those so that's just a personal choice once again. I've done videos before where I look at how to put the tow cable on there and everything like that so go look at for example my Stug 3 F8 video for a little bit of a guide on putting that part on. I've also used some of the uh, spare magic tracks from my stash to make the uh, spare tracks wrapped around part of the wheel based off reference photos. You can see I've added some uh, styrene rod there to make the track pin and I even drilled out the other side to make it look hollow and then I used tiny bit of uh, brass wire if you can see in there to tie it together as it was in the photo because it's not a full loop so it would just fall off if it wasn't tied down so little things like this you can see in reference photos and you can do them on your own vehicle if you want to so that wraps up this review as you can see there are a number of things to be aware of in this build. Some of them are for the build itself and some of them are histor historical accuracy things. Uh, just whenever you're building this kit you can take whichever ones you're interested in and hopefully this video will help you out building this kit. Like I said before it's a very common kit and it's actually a very good one as you can see I just built it out of the box. I just needed a barrel for my own choice. Only thing you really need to make a historical lacquer and everything like that that's aftermarket is the sea hook clamps but that's pretty minor. And it builds a cool vehicle, and uh, if you're building a Stoke 3 at Kursk, this is definitely one to pick up. Anyways, hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions or comments about this or any other Stoke 3s, I will be pleased to answer them in the comment section below. If you want to support me in my modeling videos, you can do so with the Patreon link on screen now. Those guys help me out by giving me a little bit of money every month, which helps me buying kits and paints and stuff like that to review and show you guys how to use. If you can't support me, no problem. I understand just giving the video a like and subscribing is already so much to me so as always thanks for watching i will see you guys next time goodbye and happy modeling take care